Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, we're going to be talking about how the hotter you think your wife is, the hotter she gets in a virtuous cycle of increasing hotness. And we will talk about what I mean by that. It is not a magic trick at all. It is something that I have observed in the natural environment uh, throughout all of my, my career working with couples and just generally in the world. Before that, of course, do subscribe. The most recent, I've talked about the most recent one. How about the upcoming one? The upcoming one is going to be about how your wife didn't marry you when you were a big swinging dick. So for a lot of guys who got more successful in or around midlife, frequently there are personality changes that are concomitant with that uh, financial change and general uh, achievement recognition that your wife may not be so keen on because she didn't after all marry you when you were super successful. So you got to think that, you know, there are things that she liked about you before that may not be coming out as much at this stage. And when guys can understand this, it frequently helps them make sense of a lot of weird and confusing things such as that the more everybody else seems to admire them, the less their wife does. All right, moving on to today's topic. So, um, it is kind of an interesting phenomenon that the women that seem to have a, here's, here's an on trend, this is probably not even on trend anymore, it was probably on trend like five years ago, uh, women that seem to have a glow up in a midlife or uh, in their 30s or whenever, you know, uh, meaning that they get hotter, they seem to look more attractive uh, than they did when they were younger. They always seem to have adoring husbands. And maybe if you're a guy, then you could be like, oh, well, you know, of course they do because the guy uh, adores them because they're so hot, because they've gotten more hot. Probably when they were less hot, guy liked them a little less. Au contraire, mon frere, it is frequently quite different than that. Frequently, these women are the women who, just like everybody else, had kind of a little downswing in attractiveness when they were like nursing, pregnant, had multiple children, etc. It really does a number to you. But the guy always thought they were super hot. He's like always thought they were hot. He thought she was hot before kids. He thinks she's hot after kids. He thinks she's just really, really hot, which speaks to, of course, my podcast and post, men need to think their wives are really hot for things to work. And so he's like always adoring. So then when it comes to a time where she has more, you know, bandwidth, more hours in the day, et cetera, because the kids aren't so little anymore, you know, what does she do? Sometimes she gets new clothes. Sometimes she gets um, to the gym when she didn't used to be able to go. Sometimes she gets new makeup or she decides to do something totally different to her hair or she decides that she's going to dress sexier now that she's older and more confident and whatever. But the thing that also makes her more confident is that the guy has always been really adoring. You know, and this also can happen to women after they divorce, but that's because they're getting a lot of positive feedback on the dating market. So, you know, like a lot of women, they're in these marriages, kind of the guy doesn't really give a shit, you know, and don't think that means he doesn't want to have sex because that's like, you know, only 20% of guys are going to be the lower libido partner, which is not nothing, but it is only, there's four out of five then who are the higher libido partner. So they're usually pursuing the wives for sex. That's not a thing, but they're just not being very adoring. They, they, they don't say, wow, when she comes in the room, they don't talk about how hot she is. They don't have any um, different reaction when she's in yoga pants or when she's dressed up. And now I did do a whole podcast on why women want you to have preferences in how they look. And, and I'll weave that in in a second because you may be like, but I'm supposed to think that she's equally hot when she's in yoga pants and when she's, you know, dressed up for a black tie event. No, you're not. You're not. <laughs> um, you're just not. But I'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, these women, they have the confidence of knowing that their husbands think that they're gorgeous like all the time, so then they can take these kind of risks to go out on a limb and dress different or, or dress more trendy or dress more sexy or, you know, try to change their body or their hair or something because they know that the guy's going to think that they look hot no matter what. You need to have, it's the same thing with parenting. You know, if your kid doesn't think that you respect them and you love them no matter what, they are not going to achieve and be their best self. You know, like, it, it's not like a kid thinks, well, mommy doesn't love me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like really, really good so that mommy loves me. Some kids maybe think like that, but the majority of kids, uh, basically, especially by adolescence, get to 
fuck you, mommy. You know, you never loved me. Well, now, now let's really see what a bad kid is. And they externalize and they start acting out and doing all sorts of shit because they don't feel like the mom really gives a shit anyway. You know, and, um, you know, and un- unfortunately, this is something that I frequently see with adult children of dysfunctional families that they had a very rebellious phase. That isn't everybody, by the way. All teens don't, you know, completely lose their shit. And when they do, it's frequently because there's animosity with a parent. Obviously, it doesn't have to be mommy. Frequently, with boys, it's daddy. With girls, it's mommy. But anyway, the less accepted and loved a child feels for who they are at their core, the less they're going to try because the more hopeless and resentful they feel. So they're specifically not going to do what the parent likes. If you think your parents only going to love you if you get good grades, at some point, many people will say fuck you to the good grades because of just resentment. They're like, yeah, that's the only thing that's important to you. Well, then I, I won't give it to you. I won't give you a kid that does well. Right. So it's very much the same analogy. And I frequently discuss it's extremely important to get outside your comfort zone and understand the profound overlap between the attachment between a parent and a child and that between adults in a romantic relationship. So when you're young, your attachment figure is the parent. And when you're older, it's the intimate partner. And when people uh, tell themselves there's no overlap between those relationships or there shouldn't be, they usually have pretty bad marriages because caretaking is is an integral part, bi-directional, so people take turns, but um, it's an integral part of a fulfilling adult relationship. That's what everybody really wants, on a, in a core way, is that unconditional love that a parent hopefully gave them, and maybe if not, then that they never got from a parent, right? So, and you could listen to all my stuff on reparenting and whatever else about that, and basically everything on attachment theory. But so, when a woman feels that she has to like maybe only be a certain way for the husband to find her attractive, like let's say she has to be skinny, do you think that then she becomes skinny? Fuck no, not not unless she has like literally zero confidence. Actually, it can go either way, even if she has zero confidence, because she could get very hopeless and basically feel like there's just no way that she could ever match what he wants. Or she could do what I said the teenager does and say, fuck you. If that's all that you care about, then I'm going to do the opposite. And basically, if the woman has a little more confidence, then she's like, screw you. I don't want to be with a man who would only like me if I was skinny. For example, right? Or if I only dress a certain way or if I have my hair a certain way or whatever. But then you may say, what about the idea that men are supposed to have preferences, which you alluded to even just earlier in this episode and which you have an entire episode on. And I know it because I, hypothetical listener, I'm an avid, rabid Dr. Psych mom show uh, fan. So yeah, Men can have preferences. They can have their special thing that they like, but the default person also has to be good. You know, just like the parenting analogy. Sure, you could love it if your kid gets A pluses, but if they come home with all Fs, you cannot love them. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, like if you could like it better if your wife dropped 20 pounds and women like it better if the husband dropped 20 pounds. Unless, of course, we're talking about a situation where they're already too skinny or whatever. I mean, men and women are equally shallow in many ways, and I discuss this frequently on my blog and everywhere else. But you got to love them and find them attractive anyway. If you don't, then they're not going to try. They're like actually going to try less because they feel so resentful and hopeless. So the women that actually seem to want, and, and this, by the way, is not all about losing weight or any such thing. The number one thing that I see that men really want, because most men do think that their wives are attractive, is for the wife to dress and act sexier and more confident. So they they think that she's hot, that's fine, but what really would wow them is for her to dress up for them, to try to be more attractive for them in kind of the same sort of way as she did when they were dating, although possibly quite different clothes, different, you know, style, whatever. Some men like the same style. Um, But the, the idea is that she's trying to be even, like, like sexier for them specifically. And of course, men like that. Women like it too. The man dresses up for a date. That This is a big thing. I talk about in couples counseling. Get a haircut. Go get some clothes that she likes. Let her pick out the clothes even better. Women hate sloppy, right? So men like sexy. Most, many men like women to wear whatever it is that they find sexy. For some men, it is the yoga pants look. For some men, it's uh, dressing up in a short skirt. Whatever the case may be. Lingerie is a big one. Whatever. 
but she's never going to do that unless you already think she's hot and you're adoring. If you already think that she walks on water, then the idea that like she could like just totally knock your socks off by dressing in this other specific way that you specifically like, she's going to want to do that. Who wouldn't? To get an awesome reaction, to get like you to fall down because you're like so amazed at how she looks. You know, TikTok does this awesome. <laughs> there was a funny TikTok I showed my husband the other day about um, the woman got <clears throat> her nails done. You know, obviously this is acted out. And uh, and, and the, the caption was how your wife expects you or wants you to act when she gets her nails done. And so she, the woman comes in. These people are like in their 20s, obviously. And this is when women are more obvious about this and, and whatever. And as they get older, they care less what you think, but also they don't want to care as much. It doesn't feel as uh, as good anymore to put yourself out there. So mostly, you know, in their 20s, people will still be very obvious about this stuff. So she comes over, acted out with her manicure, and she shows it to him. And it's like he falls down, <laughs> you know, on the floor. And he's like, you know, and then he gets up and he shakes it off. And he runs outside to like say, somebody come look at her manicure. And he finds this guy off the street and drags him into the house. And they're both looking at it and marveling at it, right? And so it was funny TikTok. And there's many that are in that vein. And the point of it was that women generally want a very enthusiastic response to something that they try with their looks and I know you're thinking I don't give a shit if she even has fingers at all never mind what color her fingernails are painted you know like it's not anything to me but if you don't act nice about her attempt and you're not loving and very supportive and enthusiastic about her attempts to get outside her comfort zone with her looks in any way and try something new. And this woman in the TikTok had like a manicure where she did like all the nails a different color, which is a trend. And um, he doesn't give a shit. He probably thinks it looks like an Easter egg basket, how her nails were painted. But if he, obviously in an equivalent that was actually in reality, not something acted, but if this man was like, oh my God, this is so cute. You always, you know, dress so nice. Like that's so great. You're always so well put together. Whatever the fuck he could say, whatever he could think to say about it, she's going to smile and she's going to feel loved. And then you know what? She's probably going to go out on a limb in a different way that he may really like, something that he may have even said. So it, it sounds so crazy to a man. I understand it would sound like I lost my mind. But if your woman just had a manicure or pedicure, she's like 10,000 times more likely to dress up in lingerie. You're like, what? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? The body parts that I see in lingerie are not her fingers and toes. It doesn't matter. She feels confident. She feels well put together. She feels hot. She feels sexy. So she's going to do something else. So if you are positive, and this is just how you reward any behavior, really, it's, you know, approx successive approximations to the mean, to the desired behavior, is what it's called in uh, behavior theory, right? So when you're training a dog, you know, you want the dog to jump in the air, well, you don't only reward the high jump in the air. How the hell is a dog going to know to do that? When the dog sits up, you give it a treat. When the dog puts one hand in the air, you give it a treat. Maybe it moves its whole body, you give it a treat. Finally, finally, it's jumping, right? So it's the same kinds of thing here. When your wife at all gets outside her comfort zone, be very, very appreciative, even if you think it has absolutely nothing to do with her looks positive for you at all, because you could give a shit about her nails or her hair or whatever the case may be, fine. Now you may say, but what about if all of her things are that she now realizes that she's given, she's... The patriarchy was making her do her hair. The patriarchy was making her do her nails. The patriarchy was making her wear underwire bras and heels so and thongs and whatever. And now uh, she's going to only wear clothes that look like, you know, we're in some utopian futuristic, you know, <laughs> a movie about like a planet where everybody is like a gender. You know, this is a good point, right? And it's something that you know, a lot of people grapple with is that the wife has repudiated the ideals of what the man considered mutually agreed upon, uh, you know, feminine 
you know, signifiers, right? So he thought that both of them liked her to, you know, dye her hair and be blonde and whatever. But it turns out that she says, I only like that because, and she rewrites history, as many people do when they feel differently, her estrogen tanks and whatever. And she says, you know what? I never fucking like doing that, which of course, going to the hair salon is, you know, hell on earth. I hate it. Anybody who uh, likes to get shit done hates sitting at the, at the hair salon. But um, now she's like, you know, I never liked it, which is probably half right, half not right. But now she doesn't like it. That's for sure agreed upon. Well, within the constraints of how your marriage is otherwise, you may have more or less leeway to say something about this. You And if you have always been loving and affirming and positive and knocked and your socks are knocked off by her attempts to change, then you know what? You could come forward and be like, okay, you know, sweetheart, I love you no matter what. Obviously, I really love the blonde hair, though. That's so hot. That's like some of my, you know, best memories are looking at you with your blonde hair. I remember this dress you wore. I remember this. I remember that. I know you're not as into it, but like, you know, for what it's worth, if you ever decide to go back, it's like, I think it's super hot. You know, like that, that shows I love you. I love you unconditionally. I also have this preference and I am going to be wowed if you do it. Many women that I work with in counseling, couples counseling, respond so much better. Ironically, if the guy posits something as a fetish, almost literally closer to a fetish, then um, of course you should do this to go up to baseline. You would think, but my wife hates sex, so wouldn't she hate a fetish? Mm, you know what? Everybody likes to think of themselves as open-minded. You know, your wife does too. You're probably not as open-minded as you think, yet you would be very complimented if I said that you were. So people like to be open-minded. So if you're like, if if you were like, man, I just love blonde hair and it's like so hot to me and like whatever, whatever. And it's like, you know, I like seeing you in bed with your blonde hair, whatever, you know, and you, of course, you're smart enough to insert anything that you like in this sentence, right? Uh, blonde hair, that bra, underwear, whatever. Then it's like she thinks, well, all right, he likes this thing. I don't like this thing as much. Maybe I'll do this thing for him. I'm not going to do it, though, if he tells me basically, why are you doing that? It's like you're acting older than you are. That is a character assassination, value judgment, sounds like an asshole. She's going to think he is part of the fucking patriarchy, and that's going to go nowhere fast, and I've seen it go nowhere fast. But if he uniquely says that she is beautiful and even more uh, uh, impressive and amazing in this specific outfit with this specific hair doing this specific thing... Women are much more open to that because it shows that there is a world in which they become like an A++++ wife versus one in which he just doesn't think of them as going into an early grave. You know, I mean, so it's like quite a big difference. So if you want to th think about this, utilize it for, you know, the sake of good, both parts. So be more open about what you like, but don't do that unless you have started to be overall a fuckload more complimentary. Like every time she comes down in the morning, you say how beautiful she looks. If you cannot do that, if it's literally you can't do it. I have a podcast about a guy who said he just couldn't call his wife beautiful because she was overweight. It's like early in my podcast in season one. You should look about it. It probably has the word beautiful in the titles. If you search in Spotify, Dr. Psych Mom Show, beautiful. Um, but uh, you'll hear what I think about that. But if you're really so not attracted to your wife that all she could ever do at this juncture is try to get up to baseline, well, then she's picking up on that. And she is like the unloved child that I had analogously earlier, not going to do shit for you, you know. So at that point, if it's really at the point where you're completely out of any sort of physical love with your wife, you got to go to therapy and think about your next steps because she's picking up on it and her self-esteem is going worse and worse and worse, like a vicious cycle rather than the virtuous cycle of, oh my God, my husband thinks I'm so hot. Wouldn't he think I was even hotter in this low cut shirt, Teehee? I'm going to try this new fun thing, you know, 40s my year, you know how uh, women are. So... <laughs>
<laughs> like for real, like that is like literally what I hear. It's like 40 is going to be my year. I'm going to go outside my comfort zone. I'm going to like, I'm wearing new stuff. And that's great. Awesome. Like all of us have thought that, you know, and like, if you already have a husband that thinks that you're hot, then you want to try anything like you'll do, by the way, like the number one search or one of the number one searches on Pornhub is hot wife. So a lot of guys secretly or not secretly have the fantasy that other men would have sex with or at the very least want to have sex with their wives. So going out looking super hot on his arm is a fantasy that many men have. And some like to think about things going beyond that and some don't. But I mean, you know, if if that was the only morsel that you got from this podcast, it's worth the free price of admission. Um, Anyway, so um, yeah, so it's not abnormal for your husband to want you to look hot. And it's not abnormal for women to want to try to look sexier as they get older within the context of an already loving, affirming, confidence producing relationship. You know, and, and if you're like, yeah, right, there's men that compliment their wives every day. Fuck yes, there are. There totally are. And they're like too busy getting laid to like talk to you about the details of their marriage. But there most certainly are men that do that. They have wives who feel very secure and who are much more willing to try new outfits and new this and new that. So if you are a man and on Facebook you see some of your cohort of women that you used to know and whatever, and they're dressed in like a sexy mini dress and you're like, why doesn't my wife dress like that? My wife's so fucking annoying. I'm sticking the mud. Think it. Think about it differently. Think, do I make my wife want to put herself out there, have the courage to put herself out there on Facebook? Because no matter what anybody says, I'm going to be drooling over it. If not, if I'm not that kind of unconditionally loving and supportive guy, maybe the woman I'm seeing on Facebook has one of those behind the scene. And that's why she's willing to act hot. Because no matter what the hell she does, she's just going from an A to an A++ rather than from a C- minus to maybe a B. Which in that case, fuck the B. Who cares? Stay at a C-. minus. All right. Hopefully this was interesting and possibly even entertaining as I hope for all of these podcasts. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.